Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. We've got a fun one for you today. Something we did for a client last week. I thought I'd share it with you. It's just a bit of fun. Uh, I've got a full width section here just with a, a title on it. If I roll down, we've got a picture of this nice sports car here. Then the info is going to scroll in on the left hand side there with a call to action button. They can go over grab it but if we keep scrolling down those are going to stick to the top and the next section is going to come up bump it up same thing description is going to come up halfway continue on and we had this with a load of products for our customer the other week and i just thought it was a bit of fun nice thing to have on your site go back up it's going to do the opposite they're going to fall out at the bottom back to the top like I say, really nice little features. No coding involved in this at all today. We're just using the inbuilt scroll features and sections of the Divi theme itself. So let's get started. For this, let's just start a new page would be easier. And let's just give it a name. And of course, we'll use the Divi Builder. I'm going to go ahead and build from scratch. Okay, by default, it puts in a little section for us and asks us to put a row in. Just going to put a title in here like I had on the front page. Let's just use a heading module for that. If we scroll down, there's a heading module. Give it a little name. Now, to make this section a little more interesting, I'm going to just roll over the little paintbrush for our title here. I was using a blocky text called Anton. I can leave that as an H1 if I want to because it is the main title for our page here. Let's grab my Anton font from my recently used up here. We're going to make it uppercase. We're going to pop it in the middle. I'm going to make it a lot bigger. Say 120. Now I'm going to make it disappear by making it white. It's just disappeared on that background. I'm going to say that it is there. It's going to appear in a minute. My section at the top here, I want it to be full width, full screen. So I'm going to go into the section itself. I've got a transparent nav bar at the top here. So our first section is going to cover all the way up to the top. I'm going to go into the background. Let's chuck in an image, third tab across. Background is always under content. Click the little plus to add image. Yeah, throw in whatever image you want. That's great, but it's all a little bit busy for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend my background image with perhaps a gradient. So I'm going to go over to gradient here. Again, I'm going to hit the little plus. By default, it puts in a blue and a green. I'll keep the blue at the top. I think the green, just left click on it. I'm going to turn that to our black. Now, I know you can't see anything because it's actually behind our image there. But if we roll down, there's a little switch at the bottom. It says place gradient above background image. Switch that on. Brilliant. We've got our gradient on top, but can't see the image. Easy fix. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on each of these colors. Just left click on them. Variegated slider over here is opacity. If you drag it down, you'll start to see that image bleed through the blue color at the top. Take it down the way you want it. I really just want a hint of that car. Now you can either leave the black as fully black at the bottom there, or you can do the same with that by again, just left clicking on it. Let's drag that back to 100% there where it was. And again, we've got the variegated slider. If I start sliding it down, you'll see that image roll through. Again, just put it where you want it. Great, that's what I wanted. But I also want this section to be full screen as well as full width. So while we're in this section, I'm going to go over to design. I'm going to go down to sizing. I'm going to set the minimum height to 100 VH, 100% 100 of the viewable height of our screen here. 100 VH. That's great. Our image is now full screen. I just want to roll down our little title there so it's a bit more central. We can pretty much do that here too. Still in design. We can go up, we can close down sizing, go into spacing just below, and we'll give it a bit of padding on the top. Let's perhaps say 20 viewable height and see what that does. Yeah, that's going to work for me fine. Great. So we've got our first section. We've got something to scroll with now. Let's add a new section because we've got a full width. We've got to go right down to the bottom and hit the little blue plus there. Again, I'm going to use a regular section. This is where we're going to put our little products and our call to action. So for our row, I'm going to add two columns to mine. You can do it whichever way around you want. In the left, I'm going to put a call to action module. 
There it is right there. Put your title in. Whatever you want to call yours, obviously. Put what you want your button to say here. I know you can't see one yet. That won't appear till we put a link in for it below. Let's say latest price. And let's get it to show up. Obviously, you can put some content in here. I'm going to leave that on the generic. Link down below. Once we put a link in here for the button, you can see that button turns up. And the reason it's green and blue, that's the way I've got mine set up in my customizer. But you can override it in the design styles down in button if you want to change it to something else. I'm going to leave that just as it is also. Well, that's great. But I want my title text. So I'm going to click on the paintbrush attached to it. H2 is okay for this. Again, I'm going to use that blocky Anton, which will be back up in my recents here. And again, I want to make this well, a lot bigger. I think 100 may be too much. Let's try 80 pixels. Uh, let's make it uppercase. That may be a little overkill. I'm going to kill that background, so I think that's going to be all right. Could actually make it a little bit bigger if I wanted to. Let's try 100. It might break it, but we're going to make it full width. No, it's fine. And while we're in the call to action, in the text, I'm going to roll up. I'm going to close up the title text. Where it says text there, I'm going to change my text from dark to light. You can do them individually, title and content, if you want to. But I'm happy for them both to be dark. Now I'm going to get rid of that background there. As we said, background's always under content. And that's just a colored background that it puts in by default. Hit the little trash can. Great. I'm going to save that. On the right hand side here, I'm going to use an image module. And for the one we did for our client, it was software. And we had an image of the software on one side and a description and link on the other side there. All I'm going to do is just chuck in one of these crazy cars. And let's have it pointing towards the writing. And of course, you can link it to anywhere you want. You can link it to the product page, wherever you want. Or you can add it open in a light box if you want, which will zoom out into a bigger picture. So let's just, for argument's sake, open in a light box. Great. But what I want is I want this image to take up 50% of the screen on the right. And this module to take up 50% of the screen on the left. And that's really easily done. Let's save our image settings here. To do that, I'm going to go into the row itself. Green tab for a row. I'm going to go over to design. I'm going to go down to sizing. First thing I want is I don't want any gaps between my modules here. I know you can't see it, but there's actually a gap between the photo and the call to action there. And there's also some space underneath. And this is called gutters. So if we switch this from no to yes, we can drag the gutter width down to zero and they'll be buffering up against each other, which is what I want. But of course, we want them to be, like I say, taking up half of the screen. If we roll down just a little bit more, we've got width just under that switch there. I'm going to roll that up to 100%. I'm going to copy that, Control c to copy. I'm going to paste it down below in the max width, Control v to paste. Or you can just type it in there if you want to. That's more like what I wanted. But we still got this space at the top here, which I don't want. That's actually in the section and in our row. It's just padding top and bottom. So while we're in the row, let's get rid of that. We can close up size and go into spacing just down below. If I put a zero in there, it'll have no padding on the top. That's taken a bit of it away. That leftover bit's in the section. And if I hit the chain, it'll do the same for the bottom there. Fantastic. Now, let's just save this. Can go into the section of the blue tab. And if I roll over it, you can see the difference between the green and the blue tabs. This white space at the top here. We need to get rid of that. Now you can actually grab it by left clicking on it and just pulling it the size you want. I'm actually going to go into the module, design, spacing, make sure we've got a zero in there. So select what you've got, hit the zero. Great, that's got rid of that. And we'll do the little chain to make sure there's none on the bottom. That's shaping up now. It's starting to look like I want it to look. A little modules too are high up here. So let's bump it down a bit with a bit of padding. Again, that's really, really easy to do. We'll save our changes in our section here. Going to go back into our call to action module. Going to go to design and spacing. 
I'm going to use a bit of padding top to push it down a bit. And let's perhaps use percentage this time. Padding top, let's try 20%. I think that's going to be all right because remember we're going to be scrolling up the screen if you want to adjust it you can use your little arrows to increment slightly here for argument's sake let's just leave it there that's going to work for me fantastic we'll just save those changes now what i want to do i want to be able to scroll up this page i want this to stick on the top but i want a bit of a gap between this and our next section and then the next one comes up and locks this one off the top sort of thing. So to actually achieve that effect, I'm gonna go into my section again, the blue tab. I'm gonna do the same as we did on the top, which is to make it full screen. So that's over to design again, the sizing. I use minimum height on mine, 100 VH. Now you won't see any difference really on the screen there, but I will be able to scroll. If we look at the little scroll bar on the side here, I can pull it down. And that's going up now. And there's the end of our section right at the bottom. But I want our little image and call to action to stick right on our nav bar. So we can do that with the row. Green tab for the row. Go over to advanced. Down to scroll effects. Sticky position. I'm going to say stick to top. So when I roll up now, it's sticking to the top there. I'm still rolling, it's sticking to the top. But I want it to stop sticking to the top when this section reaches the bottom. So the next row can come up and push this one up. So if we roll down here, we've got bottom sticky limit. I'm going to say section. So it'll stop sticking when it gets to the bottom of the section there. Perfect. Now, the other thing that I want to do is when this comes up from the bottom, I don't want to see this until it gets about halfway up the screen. I want it to sort of fade in about there before it sticks. So to do that, we can use Divi's inbuilt scroll effects just on this module. Start tab for the module. Advanced. Again, we're going to roll down scroll effects at the bottom. So I'm going to click on fade in, fade out. I'm going to enable fading in and fading out. Once we turn it on, it'll give us a viewport bottom, which is the bottom of the screen. Viewport top, you guessed it, is the top of the screen right there. Now I want mine to sort of fade out of the bottom, but I don't want to be able to see it until it's about here, or maybe even a bit higher. I'm going to drag this up because that wasn't fading out quick enough for me at the bottom there. That's better. So let's drag this up to maybe 30%. So it's totally invisible at the bottom of the screen. It's going to start coming in there. I think we can pull that up to about maybe 70%. Great, I'm going to leave that just like that. Now that we've got our first one done, really easy to duplicate. Let's save our changes here. What we want to actually do is duplicate the whole section. So it's the blue tab, two little squares to duplicate here. And if you think you can't see it, it's because we've got a full width section. So we need to scroll down and there it is. And as you can see, the next one's coming up and bumping that one up out of the way. But of course I want these around the other way. So I find the easiest way to do this is on the back end, just hit the little purple button. There's wireframe view. Here's our call to action. Here's our first little section, second section. I'm going to drag this over here. I'm going to drag my image over here. And of course, you'll want to change these out. Click on the image. Pop in your next. And we'll save that one for the call to action. All I'm going to do, change that to a two. Now the next one, I want the same way as around as our first one. So let's duplicate our first one again. We've got two identical ones underneath each other. Just roll down. And we'll pop this one down below the other one. And the last one, we'll hit the two little squares. Roll up. And we'll pop this one on the bottom again. And keep going as much as you want there. And this one's number three. Obviously, you do want to change your links and things. Down below. Now we need to flip this image. And last but not least. And change out the text in this one. And links obviously as well. This is number four. 
We'll save our changes at any time. You can go back to desktop view by hitting this little icon over here. As you can see, that little effect's working nicely there. Now, just so we've got something to scroll to at the end, I'll throw a little section on the bottom here. Again, little blue button right at the bottom. We get a regular section. Just throw in a contact form or something crazy. It's fine, I'll just leave it like that. And perhaps I'll give it a dark background. This should work fine. We've got something to end up there. Perfect. Well, let's make sure this is all going to work on the front end now. I'm going to save. We'll save draft or publish if you're ready. Now let's exit the visual builder. And here we have it. There's that little title section we put in. Here's our first one coming up there, fading in. I'm still scrolling. Our next one's coming up on the other side below. Still scrolling. As you can see, they're just cascading down. Finally, we got the little contact form at the bottom there. And of course, it'll do the same thing on the way up. They just drop down at the bottom there. Really nice little feature. Really easy to do, as you can see. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Or make a little demo video just like this one. So once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.